What's up, Gabers? Dreamcast Guy here, talking today about Scorn. Now, I've been very curious about this game ever since it was initially teased, simply because it is coming to Xbox Game Pass, and I did love the creepy aesthetic, something about these spooky corridors and weird gooiness happening in each of the different trailers we saw. Well, now I've had a chance to play it. Scorn is apparently going to be about six hours long, according to the developers and some interviews they've done. Well, they let me play the first hour of it, and I have to say, the game is very different than you might expect. The first hour had absolutely no talking, it had no cutscenes, it didn't have anything, it didn't even have any combat. The first hour was just kind of exploring, which feels a bit strange because I guess I've played like 15 or 20% of this entire adventure, and I still still have no idea what's actually going on. So Scorn is specifically not a first person shooter. It will apparently have some combat, but this is not going to be like Doom with dick guns. Instead, it's more like a slow, methodical, ambient, spooky game. During the first hour of the game, you wake up in these creepy tunnels that are sort of based on H.R. Geiger, the guy who did all the art for Alien. And I have to say that the best part of this game, before we start to get to the negatives, is the incredibly gripping art style. I just think that everything about this has this very cohesive creepiness. Everything looks like it's built out of human bones. A lot of these hallways and stuff look like you're trapped into some demonic set of organs, watching bones bones be dangling from the ceiling, or seeing big transport carts that seemingly look like they were grown organically. There's such an interesting aesthetic they've managed to establish here, and graphically, I do think that even just the visuals, the frame rate, the resolution, technologically this game looks really great. I do wish there was more to do in it though. My biggest detriment with the game itself is that because it is completely silent thus far, like there's sound effects, but there wasn't any music, there wasn't any voiceover, there wasn't any explanation, you're kind of just set loose. You're just exploring this big, maybe spaceship? Colony? Demon? Are we in hell? I, I legitimately don't know. I just watched the trailer and played the game. I, I don't know what's going on at all and you're sort of just left to your own devices. During the course of this first hour, um, I guess I was supposed to open this big door, and I eventually did, but the big series of puzzles that led up to opening that door felt completely disconnected. I had like a long puzzle where I'm just moving blocks around on a wall. I had to try and push a cart, so I did a little like rail puzzle, but the problem is that these puzzles themselves are not like bad. I think they're still well designed. The problem is that with absolutely zero input and not the best environmental like clues, I really didn't know what I was supposed to do. A lot of times there would be panels and I'd walk up and press some buttons and they just wouldn't open. I mean, there's a ton of doors inside this game that just have an X over them. I don't know if I did something wrong. I don't know if I was for side paths. Like, I truly have no idea what's going on in this game, even after having played an hour of it and progressed pretty deep in. Like, this is one of those games that I feel like people are going to have to make explanation theory videos to break down all the little tiny details, because as it stands, I have no idea what the heck's going on, and an hour of confusion did kind of leave me just saying, what the heck? Because sometimes when you're trying to solve particular puzzles, like at one point there was this weird, creepy guy, baby alien egg, I literally have no idea because there's zero dialogue or anything. So anyways, so I had to save him from this egg. Except, like, trying to put him onto this cart was a very long task. Wheeling the cart along the subway line and then getting sawed out of this thing. Like, all of this puzzle was very, very, very vague. And seriously, I spent, like, most of my time with this game was just staring at a puzzle and wondering if I'm even supposed to solve it. Like, a lot of this just was, like, cool and creepy. Like, but it felt like walking around in a screensaver where I had more fun just staring at the weird textures on the walls more than actually trying to press the buttons and figure out what's going on. Now, towards the end of this demo they gave me access, Access to, I did get what I assume is a weapon, but I have no idea. It's like this pushy hammer thing, and there were these glowing bugs that I could hit it against, but even that, I don't know if this even constitutes as combat, but presumably later on we're going to get actual guns. I think I saw like a fake shotgun looking thing in one of the trailers. Hopefully that's actually fun to use. 
but I have no idea after beating 15% of the game. So really, um, I do not know who this game is for. Like, keep in mind, I beat 50 to 100 games every single year. I'm beating usually one or two games every single week. That's how I do so many freaking reviews. I'm already working on like five other reviews right now. I experience a lot of different genres of puzzle games and RPGs and horror stuff and big old cool crazy online MMOs and stuff. I have experienced so many different games. I really do not know who this is for. I honestly think that the biggest detriment to this is when people install it. A lot of people with Game Pass are going to install this and try it out. But the fact that the first hour has zero like typical action or combat or fun flashy explosions or gore, I, I don't know. Like this game, I really do not understand the target demographic. I think maybe the game itself will turn out great. Maybe at some point, maybe there's dialogue or set pieces at some point, but the first hour, it left me extremely confused. I'm going to try and remain open-minded. I'm definitely still going to play the full game, but I do have to say that if anything, this kind of tainted my hype for it. Before this, when I first saw the trailers and stuff, I assumed it was going to be like a first-person survival horror game, and that's really not the case. This is more of a ambient puzzle game. If you want a spooky ambient puzzle game with no music, no dialogue, nothing really super fast, well, this is for you. It's like a podcast, a very spooky podcast where they make grunting noise once every 45 seconds. I'm sure some people are going to be upset who probably haven't played the game yet and are saying I don't understand it or that it's, you know, high art. I've played high art games. I've played games that do this better, which is weird because I do think the graphics, the art direction, like everybody is clearly trying with this game. I guess me as a horror fan, as a shooter fan, as an RPG fan, as a puzzle fan, somehow this is not for me as it currently exists. Maybe the full game turns out great. Maybe a proper plot twist really pulls it all together. But as it stands, it's left me very, very, very lost. But what do you think about it? Are you excited for Scorn? Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a big old thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. And please keep dreaming. Again, this game is coming to Game Pass. I think everybody who has Game Pass, install it, give it a shot. I mean, the developers clearly tried something. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.